blizzard is worse than you thought. The year is 2023, and a once beloved game developer's reputation is in absolute freefall. What was at one True, point probably the happen. highest rated developer in the industry, a studio that pumped out classic after classic, has now become the home of incomprehensible horror. Drama! Corporate greed, broken promises, botched releases, stolen breast milk. This is the story of Blizzard Entertainment. Man, I hope they sponsor me for Overwatch again this December. The year is 1991, and three guys have just graduated from the University of California. Alan Adham, Michael Morhaime, and Frank Pierce. They get together to create a game <laughs> development studio in Irvine called Silicon and Synapse. The name is deeply philosophical and well thought out, Silicon with Silicon representing Synapse. the building block of a computer, and Synapse the building block of a brain. However, people keep mistaking the silicon part for the material in breast implants. Anyway, they spend the first few years Whoa. porting games to different systems, but soon begin producing their own original games, with the Lost Vikings in 1992 and Rock and Roll Racing in 1993. Eventually, they get sick of constantly being mixed up with women's breasts, so they decide to switch things up, changing their name to Chaos Studios. Damn, However, that's the company some based edgy in Florida shit. already has the trademark, and are now asking for a hundred thousand dollars. Hmm. <coughs> they then decide to change the studio's name to Ogre Studios. But in 1994, oh, they're acquired by a holding company for a few million dollars. And turns out, their new owners aren't a fan of the new name. Okay. So they flip <laughs> through a dictionary. And, oh my god. There it is. Whoa. In 1994, Blizzard releases their first self-published title a real-time strategy game called Warcraft Orcs and Humans, and it's an instant success. It's one of the earliest real-time strategy games to hit shelves, and it's a blast. It also has a modem and LAN multiplayer, meaning people can get together and go ham. And the game does well, selling 100,000 copies in the first year. Okay. And for the first time, Blizzard Entertainment is profitable. They follow it up with Warcraft 2 in 1995, it's another home run, critically acclaimed, and now selling over a million copies in its first year. Nice. It's now 1996, and a company called Condor Games is looking for a publisher for their nearly complete game, Diablo. Ooh. Blizzard has a little look, and they like. So they buy them and rename them Blizzard North. It's also at this point that Blizzard notices something. Warcraft 2 had picked up a lasting online player base, mostly through third-party networks that connected I never players played over this match. Actually, I played Warcraft 3 mods. So they That's decide to make their own. Battle.net. I don't know anyone who played its Warcraft. Its original functionality is very simple, with the ability for players to chat to each other and search for a match. But on December 31st, 1996, it launches alongside Diablo, and people log on and play. Diablo is a massive hit also selling over a million copies within its first God year. Damn. In 1998, Blizzard launches StarCraft, an That's RTS That's when I was unfortunately space. born. It sells bigly and quickly grows a massive esports scene. Diablo 2 launches in 2000, another smash hit. It reaches almost 3 million sales by the end of the year, becoming the fastest selling PC game of all time. In 2002, Warcraft is back, and now it has an extra dimension. Warcraft 3 sells 1 million units in just one month, immediately becoming the new fastest selling PC game. It also releases with a campaign editor, which spawns a series of popular mods like Defense of the Ancients. And after its expansion in 2003, it's all hands on deck for Blizzard's next project. The year is 2004, and Blizzard is getting ready to release its biggest game yet. They'd seen how big MMOs like EverQuest were getting and thought they'd try their hand. And after $60 million and five years it's of work, time. it's finally nearing release. <laughs> Back and when November, these kinds of games only took five years, huh? World of Warcraft launches. And it takes the world by storm, smashing even Blizzard's forecasts. There are so many players trying to log on in the first week that their servers have a complete meltdown, with server queues <laughs> reaching the thousands. Get past the queues and actually into a game. How are they still well, having the same problems? <laughs> and a probable <laughs> disconnection. 
meaning you're now back on that Q screen. That After the initial server problems are ironed out and people oh, can the good actually old days. play, the game sucks people <laughs> in en masse. Fans are very enthusiastic. It hoovers up awards <laughs> left, right and centre and sells a ton of copies, reaching almost 6 million sales by the end of its first year. World of Warcraft isn't like your average game though. Instead of simply buying a copy, players have to pay a $15 monthly subscription fee to play. 6 million times 15 every month. And That's a lot of fucking money! Badly. Everyone is playing the game, and its ads go on to feature a ton of celebrities. I'm like Soda Pumpin! I approve this game. And others like Vin Diesel, William Shatner, Henry Cavill, and Soda Mila Poppin. Kunis, and Dave Chappelle announce and their addictions Poppin. in various interviews. World of Warcraft is everywhere. World of Warcraft would also result in the launch of BlizzCon 50. in 2005, a massive annual convention that would feature big musical acts <laughs> and announcements for Blizzard's future games. Fans could also ask the devs questions and were sometimes even featured. <laughs> At this point, Blizzard is among the all-time greats of gaming. Every game, a smash hit. They could do no wrong. But or first, so they thought. flying a plane is easy. Is Just it ad time? In, flip a few switches, and you're off. What's in War Thunder? It's even War easier Thunder. and a ton of fun. Jump into intense PvP that takes you from the ground to the sea, all the way to the skies. In fact, War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game of all time. Just look at all oh. those things. There's more than 2,000 of them. Someone that likes the small and agile, or a fan of the more voluptuous. Well, War Thunder has something for everyone. The game is deep indeed, with a dynamic damage system that damages individual components and a huge customization system. Hundreds of camos, historical emblems, and over a century of vehicles to pick from, and their models, painstakingly detailed to 100% accuracy, which you can enjoy in gorgeous 4K graphics. And you can play on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Oh, I assume this was a mobile free. game. Fancy a large bonus pack? <laughs> I just assume every stuff. YouTube just sign up through the link in the description or the game. pinned comments below. Modern Blizzard. The year is now 2006. World of Warcraft has almost 10 million active subscribers and is bringing in a ton of money. So naturally, it had turned a few heads. One of those heads, Bobby Kotick, CEO oh. of Activision. Oh now, shit! In 2006, no way. Activision had made good tracks <laughs> in just about every genre of games, except one, and one Wait, that was what? now booming: the yeah. MMO. With Warcraft Bad currently guy? bringing in over a billion dollars uh -oh. a year I don't in know subscriptions the here. alone, he's interested. Fuck this guy. Now uh -oh. at this point, Blizzard has changed hands numerous times and is now owned by a company uh -oh. called Vivendi. So Kotick approaches Vivendi with a proposition. Vivendi receives money. Activision receives Blizzard. However, Vivendi says no. Instead, Vivendi offers to merge their gaming subdivision with Activision, with Vivendi owning a majority share in the resulting company. And after a brief hesitation from Kotick, in 2008, the deal closes. Activision oh, Blizzard opens its doors with Kotick as CEO, and Activision and Blizzard, now its two subsidiaries. Blizzard would supposedly retain most of its autonomy and keep their CEO, co-founder Michael Morhaime. It's now 2010, and Blizzard has gone from just under 500 employees before the Hello. launch of World of Warcraft Hello. to now over 4,600. Holy shit! The majority of whom are preparing for the launch of StarCraft II in July and the third major Warcraft expansion, Cataclysm, in December. Now these launches were not small. Warcraft had been hitting peak after peak of players and was now at 12 million monthly subscribers. God damn, and how many do they have now? Sales projections are also sizable. But Blizzard currently has a problem. Their forums. One, they're a little oh, bit toxic. Two. <laughs> Blizzard has a big team of moderators. Two, but according two million, to them, right? This still wasn't enough. So behind the Seven scenes, million? they okay. get brainstorming. And someone has a brilliant idea. How about we just force everyone that posts on our forums yeah. to use their real first and last name? Genius. 
Uh, and in July 2010, <laughs> um, Real ID yeah. is unveiled. And people absolutely hate it. So in an attempt to sell the idea to players, Blizzard's community manager posts his full name on the forum. See guys, it's fine. But almost what? instantly, people descend on the forum and get to work. And within oh mere minutes, no. they find and publish his home address, what was he phone number, age, Facebook, family names, and a list of his favorite music and movies. Oh wow, okay. that's some personal you know what? shit. Fair enough. And after just a few days of being announced, Real ID is scrapped entirely. By 2009, the Warcraft 3 mod Defense of the Ancients had gained a significant following and had even spawned a whole new genre of games, MOBAs. For much of that time, ah, my- Blizzard had paid little attention to the mod or the game, but the success of the recently launched League of Legends could no longer be ignored, <laughs> and Blizzard finally steps in, starting work on their take on the genre, oh, titled no. Blizzard Dota. <laughs> Around the same time, and Valve wants to make Heroes their of the storm. They'd hired the head dev of the original Dota mod, snapped up the Dota trademark, and they're calling their new game Dota 2. Blizzard is furious. <laughs> so in 2012, they file a statement of opposition, arguing that the name Defense of the Ancients was associated exclusively with Warcraft due to it being made in their map editor. However, this argument has issues. See, The mod was created in Warcraft 3's map editor, but that map editor had no specific terms and conditions on ownership of said maps, IP, and concepts. They end up settling out of court a few months after, with Valve getting the commercial rights to the term Dota, and Dota 2 releases in 2012. It's massively successful, and goes on to be an esports giant. Blizzard gets non-commercial use of the title for its community and renames Blizzard Dota to Heroes of the Storm, which releases in 2015, and supporters can three years later. (laughs) Blizzard would change its licensing agreements for all future games to include their ownership of player-created maps in an attempt to avoid this ever happening again. It's 2012 and the massively anticipated sequel to Diablo 2 is looking like it's releasing this Yo, year. Its development had been Thank a bit rocky, so with its dev team, Blizzard Frank. North, being canned in 2005, along with their version of the game. But on the 15th of May 2012, the rebooted Diablo 3 launches. The game is horrendous. For one, its launch is horrific. The game is online only, and turns out there are massive server issues. People are spamming their login details over and over, only to be kicked out by error 37. What's worse, (laughs) there's no queue system in place, so you have to manually retry every minute. This issue takes over a week to fix. Then there's the auction house. Here, loot can be bought and sold using your mom's credit card. Activision Blizzard gets filthy rich, while the balancing gets obliterated. Endgame content is also essentially non-existent. However, the game sells almost 4 million copies in its first 24 hours, and over time, slowly makes a turnaround. In 2014, the real money auction house is closed, and Blizzard launches Reaper of Souls, an add-on praised almost unanimously. They're ready to make a second add-on to the game, but management says no. Apparently, executives see the game as a massive failure, and demand devs jump ship. Why? The year is now 2015. The past 10 years had seen massive expansions to Warcraft, including controversial changes to the game and its mechanics. And player numbers reflect that. Now being 44% in a growing number of players long to go back to the days of vanilla. Version 1 of the game, back in 2004. One fan even floats the idea to Blizzard themselves at BlizzCon 2013. Here's how that goes. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. <laughs> okay then. We'll just make one ourselves. Why are they so and the rude? The made Nostalrius vanilla what server goes response. online in February 2015, <laughs> running version 1.12, a month after the original launch. Yo, go it's things. not long before the server gets massively popular, with almost a million accounts registered. It's also not long before Blizzard catches wind and brings Uh-oh. the hammer down. They Their lawyers like sent them a cease and desist in 2016, and the server is promptly shut down. Meow. 
realizing they were completely wrong about vanilla Warcraft. Blizzard do a full 180 and announce Warcraft Classic in 2017. Yes! Back in 2007, Blizzard started work on a huge MMO called Project Titan. It was described as a combination what? of Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress, and The Sims. Hmm. But development huh? led the nowhere, Sims? and six years later, the plug I, is pulled. I don't remember this. A massive failure on Blizzard's part, and a major internal embarrassment. However, the team behind it would attempt to rework the remains of the story and assets into another project. And in 2016, Overwatch hits shelves. No way! It's amazing. It's critically acclaimed across the board. Dude, when over and the first popular, like year or two of Overwatch, becoming one of the most popular esports titles on the market. Uh, that paired with their genre pioneering card game Hearthstone oh back yeah, in 2014, that now has almost a hundred million players, and Blizzard is looking strong. However, there are problems brewing. See, oh. Overwatch was the last big game they'd had in the pipeline for a while, and they realize they don't have much to show off for BlizzCon 2018. So Blizzard rushes to find something I remember to this off. year. I remember but this year. <laughs> fast forward to November 2018, and their presentation oh, is yeah, ready Oh yeah, keep to in go. mind, this is the same year that Riot announced, like, Valorant, Arcane, their fucking card game, a bunch of shit, and then... <laughs> they sprinkle a few niche uh, announcements here and there, like a remastered Warcraft 3, but they have one big announcement centerpiece. After six long years... A brand new Diablo. Whoa! For mobile. Bruh. Like, look, Diablo 2, come play the mobile game that has nothing to do. Uh, I, I'm amazed, honestly. It's this bad. Yo, it's Asmin. This is fucking insane. I, I don't even know, like, what to even say about this. Just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? Oh! Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. That poor guy who's answering the question. Yeah, you guys all have The game eventually launches. They were trying their best with what they had. Firstly, <laughs> so it's not even developed by Blizzard, but their Chinese partner NetEase. And turns out, it's monetized to the tits. Yay, of course. It costs over half a million dollars to max out a single character, and becomes the worst rated game ever on Metacritic. By 2018, Fans are noticing something. Activision Blizzard had been creeping, and Blizzard was changing. See, back in 2013, Active Blizzard had bought back the remaining Vivendi shares for about $7 billion. Holy fuck! Gay, and by extension, Bobby Kotick now had complete control of both Activision and Blizzard. Fast forward to 2018, and this creeping had only got worse. Because of the slowdown in game releases, Blizzard revenues are taking an absolute nosedive. So Active Blizzard steps in. It pushes the company to cut costs and gets them to produce games at a faster pace, with Kotick apparently installing his own executives within Blizzard to ensure that happens. Apparently, tired of Active Blizzard's meddling, Blizzard co-founder Mike Morhaime steps down as president and CEO and leaves the company after 27 years of work. God He's damn. succeeded by Warcraft's executive producer, J. Allen Brack. This guy. And by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. And as soon as this happens, so we many sound. classic lines. The company immediately prioritizes cutting costs, and the Heroes of the Storm's development team is outright annihilated. Its esports league is Goodbye. also scrapped right before its 2019 season. As a result, entire teams, commentators, and support staff are suddenly left jobless. And despite 2018 being a record year for Active Blizzard profits, they lay off 800 employees, almost 10% of the company. They begin rehiring the exact same jobs a couple of years later. I love Overwatch, I love So going into 2019, I love over on the other side of the world, and things are happening in Hong Kong. They're not good. Their government has proposed a bill that would give China more authority over them, and that's not too popular. At the same time, Hong Kong native Blitz Chung is participating in Hearthstone's I forgot Sports about team. this! He wins, and uses the post-game interview to show his support for the protests. But as soon as he says it, something happens. See, Blizzard has a huge player base in China, oh, and to keep God. that player base available to them, they have to bend over backwards for the Chinese government. 
So when this happens, they go scorched earth. They take the live stream down seconds after he says it, slap him with a year long ban, and even confiscate his prize money. Jeez. Even the guys casting the stream are fired. It's not long before the internet catches wind. I didn't, I didn't even know about that! God damn! Serious. At one point, even Congress members have a go. After a few days of pressure, Jay Allen Brack eventually comes out. He reduces the ban to half a year oh, and grants wow. Blitz Chung his prize money back. He also says that, that Blizzard's relationships better. with China had no influence on their decision. Blizzard is starting to look seriously not cool. So they decide to go into BlizzCon 2019 with the big guns, announcing oh, Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. Also, Yay. that Warcraft remaster they'd announced at the infamous 2018 BlizzCon is coming out next year. This'll be good. Back in 2015, Blizzard had set up a subdivision to remaster old games, the first of which would be Warcraft 3. And in January 2020, the highly anticipated remaster launches. And, oh boy, the game is beyond terrible. Here's why. Oh. Before launch, Warcraft 3's advertising touted multiple new features. Over four okay. hours of cinematic new cutscenes, more story, and new Ooh. voice acting, and a complete campaign overhaul, changing the story okay. to be more yeah, in line with the current nice. Warcraft lore. That sounds but when nice. players log on, turns out absolutely none of this is in the game. This is after being advertised on the website for over a year. How do how does There's also a ton like, of features from the original Warcraft 3 just outright missing. I don't understand what happens. Like, they just no cut it play. out? No. No profiles? Uh, no. No account stats? Uh, no. No profiles? No custom campaigns? No. No clans? No. No cross-region play for custom games? Um, no. And no offline play? <laughs> no. It's possible after a few patches, but it's a little complicated. Yeah. Also, after some digging, <laughs> people sure. realize the main menu background is actually a Chrome-based web app, and is taking up more of your CPU power than the actual game. Online matchmaking sucks and kicks you out all the time. <laughs> That's so This is without a way to reconnect, Blizzard by the way. <laughs> Graphics are worse than advertised. Treason. The new art direction is bad. Five of the game's maps are exactly the same as the original, and poor optimization, tons of crashes. Of course, why, why, why on wouldn't top of it all be? Of that, Reforged <laughs> is a mandatory update for everyone with the original game. Own the original with no intention of upgrading? Well, here's an additional 30 gigabytes of install size anyway. All of this amounts this to one just of the- make, This isn't even like that bad, but I had to download retail, wow, 90 gigabytes to play Plunderstorm. Oh my god, I would be so fucking pissed if I didn't have a external hard drive. Worst launches of a game. Oh my god. <laughs> Within a few days of release, it ends up at 0 0.5 out of 10 on Metacritic. At the time, oh the lowest god. Metacritic score in history before being dethroned by Diablo Immortal. So naturally, hordes of people pile in to request refunds. <coughs> but wait, you've booted up the game even just once? Sorry, you're not allowed. There's so much outcry about the game, however, that Blizzard eventually caves and starts actually granting refunds. Nice. The game is so bad that the entire classic games division of Blizzard is completely canned. You're fired! Get out of here! It also causes an upcoming Diablo 2 remake to be pushed back more than a year. Did that so one it's ever 2021, come out? and Blizzard's reputation is currently abhorrent. <laughs> but luckily, Overwatch credit. 2 is just around the corner. It did? Okay. Oh, hold on a sec. Oh god. Oh god, here we Turns go. Out that over the last <laughs> here we go. Years, the California Civil Rights Department had been investigating Activision Blizzard due to multiple reports of sexual Oh, it's this part. Staff. I thought they were going to touch it in Overwatch 2. They had this this happened too. To file suit. The lawsuit states oh that sexual god. harassment, unwanted advances, and groping are common within Blizzard, both before and after the merge. This includes the mention of an executive suite at 2013's BlizzCon. It's not a nice yeah. place. In fact, it's some employees literally dub it the Cosby Suite. Then there's the alleged underpaying of women, and complaints to both HR and the president repeatedly being ignored. But there was something else. The employee's breast milk. It keeps being stolen. In the lawsuit, more than one employee alleges breast milk theft. It was very clearly breast milk in- What? 
I don't remember this. Oh, God. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, like, what one of the things that I thought about doing before I became a streamer, or, like, before I became, like, an established streamer, is, like, it might be kind of fun to work at a game dev company. And I had multiple people tell me, you don't want to do that unless you have, like, insane mental strength because of the shit that happens. And I was like, oh, and that was in, like, 2000. 16, so before this came out. <sighs> in baggies with a baby's face on it, a former producer claims. One day, I went to retrieve my pump supply at the end of the day, and it was gone. The fallout is monumental and makes headlines <laughs> industry wide. Few people are spared. Current Diablo 4 lead, gone. His character's name in Overwatch, also gone. Level designer on World of. What's his name now? Cassidy, yep. Warcraft, Cassidy. Gone. Head of HR, definitely gone. Warcraft League gone. I never Jay remember gone. that shit. Their he chief was so legal as well. The Wall Street Journal also alleges that Kotick knew about the whole thing, ignored it, and in some cases, even jumped in himself. He denies most of the allegations. I did not. But eventually apologizes <laughs> for a one-time instance where he left a voicemail threatening to have his assistant killed. That's all fine then. Water under the bridge. Sponsors like T-Mobile, Coca-Cola, Kellogg, IBM and Pringles also all jump ship from the Overwatch Esports League. And Activision Blizzard is hit with a class action lawsuit on behalf of its shareholders. What? Overall, the situation's not looking great. Yeah, not good. Activision Blizzard denies most of the claims, and in June 2022, they investigate themselves and find no wrongdoing. Nice. The immediate reaction to Overwatch 2's announcement was one of confusion. Overwatch 1 was a monetized game with a thriving player base and regular updates. The kind of game that doesn't need a sequel. So this was a strange move. Overwatch 2's development would also mean the end of support for Overwatch 1 in 2020, with us seeing no new Overwatch content for multiple years, essentially killing the game. What? But with Overwatch 2, Blizzard reassures us it was all worth it. Just look at all this new stuff. 5v5 instead yeah, of 6v6. Yeah, I remember when they announced Overwatch 2, I was like, well, what about Overwatch 1? It's fine. It's still Overwatch 1. <laughs> the, the old game didn't go anywhere. Shiny new graphics, balancing changes, map reworks, six new maps, three new heroes, wow. more than 30 new skins, a new game mode, a battle pass and cosmetics shop, and most importantly, a PvE campaign. People had been longing for a story in the Overwatch universe, and now it was finally happening. Is it bad that I like battle passes? <laughs> like, I actually like them. Uh, oh, man. Yo, Dazar, thank you for 10 gifted. Yes. I know it's bad, but I do like them, and I don't and know why. Ambitious. The marketing is working on campaign, me. Along with hero uh, missions, talents, and massive skill trees unique to each hero. No. Hundreds of missions at launch. I they bought like three a truly battle repayable passes, campaign. And I enjoyed and don't them. Don't worry. With Overwatch 2, <laughs> Blizzard tells us they were redefining what a sequel really means. Overwatch wow. 1 players get all the new maps, updates, and heroes that release in Overwatch 2, and both player bases can crossplay together. The purchase of Overwatch 2 essentially only granting the PvE mode. Battle passes are okay. fun, you can afford so. them. No, I even like those free battle passes where it's like, oh, you like 80% of the battle pass is free, but it's like shitty stuff, but you pay money and you get the actually good stuff. I still use those ones for free. I don't know, I just like them. Players are on board. <laughs> battle pass, Tenth of girl. March 2022, I'm sorry. and Blizzard has an announcement. <laughs> We know we said hundreds of missions at launch, but, well, it's taking a while, so we're just going to release the game now without it. And then and they add never it later. did it ever. Then in June, they come out again. The game's now free to play and launching in October. But anyway, on the 4th of October, 2022, it goes live. Whoa, there I are remember. Some Events are bad, tons of balancing issues, the looking for group feature is now just completely gone, but mainly, 
There's the new cosmetic system. In Overwatch 1, earning cosmetics was simple. Just play the game, level up, yeah, and you earn could, you loot could boxes buy them. that give you skins. Yeah, and you, you could, could also buy them, them with uh, free that was currency too. Optional. And loot In boxes. In Overwatch 2, things are different. Blizzard has now slapped on a seasonal battle pass system, where the bulk of cosmetics would now Whoa! be unlocked. There's also a rotating store, and the prices <laughs> there aren't great. You can unlock skins for free. Is that through a $40 the system, gun? But there's a problem. They're trying it takes to be like about Valorant, eight man. To get one. A simple character recolor takes almost four weeks. All of this means that it will take you around 327 years to get all the stuff you could get relatively quickly for free in Overwatch 1. And it's gonna Better be get all voice lines. Also, and loot box. there's now a new hero every other season, and they'd be locked behind the later levels of the season pass. Oh, your I forgot are, about that! Spend every minute of your life grinding for them. Or pay up. Give me money. In Overwatch One, they were unlocked. <laughs> I don't know what they away. expect to happen because, like, e even like I, I do enjoy, to some a reasonable extent, spending money on games. Like, if it's a game that I like, I'm willing to put money into it. When I was addicted to Overwatch Two, when I saw like, oh, the new hero, you have to pay or wait a week. I was like, well, I guess I'm just not playing for a week. And that's me, who I, I like wailing on games. I was like, well, I guess I'm just not playing. Like. Why would I pay to play play a week earlier? It's so stupid. Fans oh don't god, they changed it. It's still so But dumb. then in May 2023, Blizzard comes out again. So, that PvP hero campaign that we've been advertising... No, I don't play Star really anymore. Much the sole reason we made the sequel in the first place. Pretty much completely scrapped. No more talent trees or hero missions. Yay. Instead, we're just gonna pepper some PvE missions around every few seasons. This, what the dude, the skill tree sounded the so sick. Point for the I bet the that they couldn't figure out how to balance it. Still planned about. with its first release on August 10th, but when it finally releases, it's only three missions. Blizzard is saying the game won't be getting any more story missions until at least 2024. That's it this also year. Overwatch 2 to Steam, and it instantly becomes the worst reviewed game of all time there. Yippee! The year is now 2023. And Blizzard's reputation Dara, has never been worse. So when Diablo 4's release approaches, people are cautious. But on the 5th of June, the game launches. And it's surprisingly good. There are some issues here and there, but reviews are mostly positive, and over 10 million people log in and play. Making Diablo Yay. 4 Blizzard's fastest selling game of all time. For the first time in years, things are actually looking up. And this game was live service, meaning it would receive free seasons of content for the foreseeable future. The first of which was launching in July. Yay! A month later, and in July, season one of the game drops. It is disastrous. And Reddit goes into a complete meltdown. Turns out, everything gets a big nerf. I need to piss so bad, but there's only three minutes left on the video. Do I just hold... I'm just gonna hold it in. Score. The sorcerer <laughs> class, which was already underpowered, is hit especially hard. Then there's the enemies being overpowered, much less XP, a bunch of reskinned dungeons and enemies, barely any new content, and zero quality of life changes. Everything here is wrong. <laughs> One streamer on Twitch tries to explain why the season isn't that bad. Here's how that goes. This explosion is at. I actually just lost my hardcore character while trying to explain I heard this about to you, this. I changed my mind. I hate this season. And it seems Blizzard also has a bit of a fixation so on sad. the battle pass, battle pass, the battle pass, battle pass, battle pass, battle pass. Speaking of which, it gives paid players 666 platinum. The cheapest item in the store is 800. Also, back when Blizzard was designing the menus for the game, they decided to place the Activate Premium Battle Pass button mm. right next to the button you're constantly pressing to see your season progression. Ooh, that's kind of small. There's also no confirmation I button. I wonder why. So if you want to check your progression and accidentally misclick, congratulations, you've just purchased it. There are multiple other confirmation buttons for other menu options. Really? So Blizzard's last few years... Yeah, that, that has to... That has to be illegal, Blizzard what? Is now worse than Bethesda. It had slowly That's insane. Busy, with overreach from Activision, more fiscal concern, and most of the original talent having left the company, among other things. Maybe Blizzard wasn't the company it once was. And after a back-to-office mandate in 2023, even more talent is leaving. 
So much talent that Blizzard is now actually creating crisis maps for what content they can and can't get done. But with the acquisition from Microsoft, who's currently focusing on making good exclusives to slap on their Game Pass, some fans are hopeful for change. But for now, the outlook on Blizzard Entertainment remains bleak. Wow. And don't forget about the epic, accurate, action-packed War Thunder. Yeah, Thunder! War Thunder! Thunder! Sign up through the link in the description or comments That's just for a sad. big bonus pack. Man, things going corporate ruins everything.